I asked ChatGPT how to get started with Medicare. Let's see what it says. Let's see what I think about its answers. My name's Jay O. I'm the author of Maximize Your Medicare. You can see a book cover just below. MaximizeYourMedicare.com is your place for information, as well as things about the book, as well as important forms that you may need when you are trying to get enrolled in Medicare. For those of you who live under a rock, live in a cave, maybe you got left in a time capsule, ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence tool. You can ask it questions in everyday terms. Out will come very, very good answers in general. That said, not everything is perfect. And that creates problems because under Medicare, you are talking about legal structures and regulations. You've got your own personal situation. So while ChatGPT will give you very good answers in general, it's not going to be able to provide you specific guidance for your situation. What I did here is I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a timeline to enroll in Medicare. Let's see what it has to say. It's incredible, right? It's an incredible tool. Here's a timeline for enrolling in Medicare. Age 65 eligibility for Medicare begins. You can enroll in Medicare during the seven month period that starts three months before the month you turn 65, includes the month you turn 65 and ends three months after the month you turn 65. Not exactly. The reality is, is that it begins three months prior to the first day of the month that you turn 65. And that can matter. Let's say, for example, your birthday is April 30th. Medicare does not begin on April 30th for you. It begins on April 1st, in which case the three-month period prior to you turning 65 is three months prior to April 1st, which is January 1st. The reason this is important is because of all of the delays and multiple steps that may be required in order to enroll in Medicare correctly. What this means is if you leave it until April 30th, you've already burned through one of the three months prior to turning Medicare eligible. The remaining eight weeks, they can fly by the steps not correctly completed. As a result, the amount of stress and unrest created by the fact that ChatGPT has provided this slightly inaccurate answer, priceless. This can throw off the entire timeline. Let's go to this, let's go to this point. After initial enrollment period, if you miss your initial enrollment period, you can enroll in Medicare during the general enrollment period, which runs from January 1st to March 31st each year. Coverage begins on July 1 of that year. This is 100% inaccurate. It is true there's a general enrollment period. It runs during the throughout the first quarter of every year, January 1st through March 31st. If you have somehow not enrolled in Medicare accurately on a timely basis, then you can apply for Medicare during the first quarter. Where it is completely wrong is the idea that Medicare coverage would begin on July 1st of that year. That is now incorrect. There's a new law called the Bennis Act. Medicare coverage begins on the first day of the next month. So if you apply for Medicare on February 2nd, your Medicare coverage would begin on March 1st. You still have steps to complete and things to consider, but in this case, ChatGPT, this is a failure. Point number four here is a special enrollment period. If you or your spouse are still working and have group health insurance through an employer with 20 or more employees, you may have a special enrollment period to enroll in Medicare. This period starts eight months after the employment ends or the group health coverage ends, whichever comes first. This is also not entirely correct. The first part is that if you or your or your spouse are still working and have group health insurance through an employer of 20 more employees, you may have special enrollment period to enroll in Medicare. If you are a full-time employee and covered by your group health insurance, then you do not face late enrollment penalties. Let's go to the second sentence. This period starts eight months after the employment ends or the group co health coverage ends, whichever comes first. This is a very convoluted sentence. It is true that you can have an eight month break and not be covered by health insurance 
and not face a Part B late enrollment penalty. However, there is a second late enrollment penalty under Part D, and that window by which you do not need to have credible coverage lasts only 63 days. Therefore, this sentence here, this entire point here, isn't right. I wouldn't use special enrollment period definition here under ChatGPT. Instead, if your health insurance ends and you are the full-time employee and covered by your health insurance as provided by your employer, you do have a special enrollment period. You will not face late enrollment penalties. There are forms to complete. Crazy people write books about these matters. I don't suggest that you play around, mess around with these different time capsules of lapsing. You would have to have very extreme personal financial circumstances in order for me to suggest to you to allow a break in health insurance or prescription drug coverage. Not impossible, but very unlikely. Point number five, Medicare Advantage open enrollment period. If you're enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan, you can make changes to your coverage during the annual enrollment period, which runs from October 15th to December 7th each year. Oh boy. Again, this is not the terminology. This is not the actual words that I would use. The period between October 15th and December 7th is the annual election period. I don't understand why people continue to get this wrong. It's important to have these windows named correctly. The reason is, is that when people whip around these different terms, callously, loosely, the next person gets the wrong understanding. And then everything is thrown off. I can't put us into the time capsule if you've got the mis if you have a misunderstanding of terminology. So the downside here to not getting this correct is huge. Let's go back to what it said. If you're enrolled in Medicare Advantage plan, you can make changes to your coverage during the annual election period which runs from October 15th to December 7th each year. Correct. This is also the period that if you want to attempt to switch from Medicare Advantage to Medigap, this would be that period. And the reason is so that you can have no lapse in coverage from both health as well as prescription drug benefits. It's important to remember to apply for Medigap first to make sure that you get accepted because you may be subject to underwriting unless you are entitled to Medigap open enrollment or you have a state where you are allowed open enrollment year-round, something that only exists in a couple of states. Let's look at point number six, Medicare prescription drug coverage. If you want Medicare prescription drug coverage, you can enroll in a standalone Medicare prescription drug plan during your initial enrollment period or during the annual enrollment period October 15 to December 7. Mostly correct. It is true. For example, when you turn 65, you can enroll in a Part D plan, or you can also have your prescription drug benefits provided to you inside a Medicare Advantage plan called Medicare Advantage Prescription Drug Plan. You can switch among your Medicare Part D plans during this annual election period, which run from October 15th to December 7th. On this channel are a number of other videos to differences in prescription drug plans, as well as impact of the Inflation Reduction Act, which has dramatically changed Part D. Let's stop here for today. We'll have more videos on this channel where I ask ChatGPT a number of questions about financial matters. You'll get my view on the answers and whether or not you can use it as a guide. I'm Jay O. I'm the author of Maximize Your Medicare. I'm an education fellow at the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe.